I hope everyone has joined. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to this webinar on successes with polyurethane dispersions. This webinar will be conducted by Tushar Trivedi, Kirk Booth, and Francesca Ashby. So let me introduce myself first. My name is Tushar Trivedi, and I work as International Sales and Applications Manager for Incares Limited. I am with Incares since eight years. I'm working as an applications engineer to start with, uh, giving formulation advice, technical support, um, providing help on how to use Incares's products. Uh, since last two years, I'm involved in sales, but I'm still responsible for applications department. I have completed my master's in paints and coatings and have 16 years of experience working in this industry. Uh, before we go in, let me just quickly give you uh, some of the webinar rules. Um, as you would have seen, all the attendees uh, um, are muted. So if you have any questions, please put the questions in the Q&A session and we will take this selection of questions at the end, depending on the time. If we don't get a chance to answer your question during the webinar, then we will respond directly to you afterwards. The recordings will also be available after this session. The session should take around 30 to 40 minutes, depending on time for questions. We will send you a feedback survey after the session, so please fill that feedback in. That would be much appreciated. If we have any technical difficulties in Microsoft Teams, then I will share um, some more information during that time, but also please follow a WebEx link, which is in this chat box as well. So in today's webinar, uh, we will go through the disparate range of polyurethane dispersions. We will also discuss on polyurethane chemistry. Then we will also uh, discuss on custom chemistry for polyurethane dispersions. Then we, we will give you some examples on polyurethane projects on different applications uh, like the successes and also the ongoing projects. And as I explained, um, the presentation or the webinar will be done by Tushar, Kirk and Francesca. I will now pass on to Kirk. Kirk Booth, over to you. Okay, thank you, Tushar. Good morning, everybody. As Tusha mentioned, my name is Kurt Booth, um, an R&D chemist at Incares. I started at Incares back in 2003 as a laboratory technician. In 2007, I was promoted to R&D chemist. My work focused on the development of key intermediate products for our sister company, um, where I learned quite a wealth of um, development knowledge. At the end of 2017, I became part of the custom chemistry team for Incres, where my role is to support Incres's sales team. OK, so the Dispres range was launched in 2014 as our range of pyrrolidone free PUDs. Um, five new products, all completely hazard free, um, were launched, included in this range, and that included PUDs that um, offered high performance, tough, resilient coatings um, with good chemical resistance, etc. Um, alternatively, we offer coatings for flexible films, so elastomeric type material, and also coatings for rigid plastics, um, so coatings that require good exterior durability and uh, weathering resistance. OK, so polyurethane dispersions or PUDs are often the polymer type favoured by coatings formulators to boost performance properties such as toughness, scratch resistance, chemical resistance in a wide variety of applications. Uh, PUDs bring these advantages and often combine them with other features such as low temperature flexibility 
and lack of tackiness. Um, and you usually see this with acrylics. And they um, cannot easily combine such properties. OK, so. Clean and versatile performance of Dispres. Historically, one of the main drawbacks with PUDs has been the use of pyrolidone solvents in manufacturing as they help to reduce viscosity during um, manufacture and also as a film coalescence aid. There has been and still is a significant regulatory pressure to eliminate the use of products containing pyrolidone solvents. So Incares has addressed the reclassification Pyrolidone solvents by developing the new dispress range, pyrolidone free polyurethane and polyurethane dispersion acrylics. One of the major obstacles to replacing these solvents, pyrolidone solvents, is to achieve good coalescence of the film without the need for the addition of significant amounts of core solvent, which ultimately contributes to the end VOC of the product. As required with alternative solvents. The technology developed by Incres has the ability to achieve excellent coalescence with minimal or no additional core solvent for a hard crystalline polyurethane coating. This allows the formulator to limit the VOC content of the products and satisfy increasingly stringent legislation requirements. So life beyond pyrolidone solvents. Incres have combined the development of novel proprietary chemistries and processes to produce an alternative to pyrolidone solvents, specifically NMP and NEP in the manufacture and formulation of PUDs. This innovative approach has resulted in a range of hazard free PUDs and PUD acrylic hybrid dispersions that produce hard crystalline PU coatings with comparable physical properties to equivalent coatings based on pyrolidone solvents. So here's a overview of the Dispres range, um, starting with Dispres 101. This PUD is high TG PUD, which is hard crystalline dispersion with excellent chemical resistance. Um, it's suitable for clear protective top coats and lacquers. Typical applications, uh, protective coatings for rigid plastics, window frames, etc. Alternatively, Dispres 102 is a flexible, toughened self cross-linking PU dispersion with excellent optical clarity and excellent chemical and block resistance. Dispres 101A is a polyurethane dispersion acrylic hybrid, um, which is designed for excellent pigment compatibility and is ideal for use in tough coatings with good durability. Our latest addition to the range is Dispres 103, which is a flexible toughened PU dispersion that forms films with excellent optical clarity and good chemical and block resistance performance. And finally, Dispres 201 is a VOC free polyurethane dispersion that is soft and flexible, but also offers good impact resistance and low temperature flexibility without the tackiness that you usually see with acrylics. Um, this makes it suitable for packaging, and laminating applications. So what makes polyurethane so versatile? This is a um, simplified view of um, the components used to manufacture polyurethane dispersion. So you can see the red wavy line here is the soft segment, the amorphous portion of the polymer. Um, this gives the, the polymer the flexibility that you may need as a formulator. And this is typically introduced um, through the polyol component. Alternatively, the hard segments that give the toughness and the chemical resistance, etc., is um, introduced through the choice of isocyanate or the chain extender that's used in manufacture. So there are a number of different components that can be used to tweak and tailor the polymer to meet the demands of the customer. So as I mentioned, this is just an example of the amorphous or the soft segment of the polymer. Um, and it gives a, an overview of the types of polyols that we can use to tweak the performance to meet the performance requirements of the customer. So, for example, um, we could decide to use an ether or an ester to um, promote flexibility within the system. Whereas, if we wanted something with more chemical or UV resistance, then we would favour a carbonate linked system. 
So just with the polyol choice itself, you can see there's versatility there. OK, so what makes great custom chemistry? Customers are certainly a, a big part of custom chemistry approach and the standard grades are selling across Europe and North America. These successes are mainly due to the correct recommendations of distributors and our sales team. Moving forward and the new territories and more emphasis on um, South America, Asia, and India and also in Russia. OK, so the Disprez customer chemistry um, range. This range is intentionally small to make the initial choice of resins simpler for the customer. Incares offers the ability to customise resins to our customers specific needs. Custom chemistry philosophy applies mostly to Incares PUD offerings, as you saw from the um, simplified overview earlier, the polymer composition. There are many examples of where this approach has brought significant successful business where the standard products alone would have failed. So what is custom chemistry? So samples of the standard dispersed products are sent to the customer and the closest technical match to their requirement is sampled. Customers provide feedback about the resin performed, about how the resin performed in their application. Depending on the value of the business and the technical viability of the request, modifications to this polymer are then made. The final resin is given a CS number and sold as a resin designed to the customer's requirement. OK, thank you for listening. I would like to hand over to Francesca to continue with examples of application success. Thanks Kirk and good morning everyone and thank you for joining us. So as Kirk mentioned in this section of the webinar I'll be discussing some examples of success we've had with PUDs previously and also some ongoing examples of work that we're doing at the moment. But before I go into further details about the projects um, let me just begin by introducing myself. So I've been working at Incares now for a little over two years and my role as applications technician involves product formulation and testing, technical support, and we also provide hands-on lab training to our sales agents at our site in Preston. The first example of success that I'd like to share with you this morning is a project that we undertook with a UK flooring company. They were looking for a water-based top coat for a cementitious substrate that gave good scratch resistance. So as an initial offering, we suggested Dispurus 101, as that's our standard hard coating for rigid substrates. However, there was a problem. So as you can see in this photo, after application, the customer reported a large amount of cracking and flaking. So once it had been identified that Dispurus 101 was failing to effectively film form on the porous substrate, we could begin the resin modification process. So this new resin had to be able to film form despite the loss of solvent to the substrate and also to keep its scratch resistant properties. And as a result of this R&D work to modify a standard product, Incares was able to replace the customer's existing product with a higher performing solution that was actually available at a lower price. And this final image is just acting as an illustration to show the success achieved by our custom chemistry approach. We developed a product that film forms with no issues to give a coating with high scratch resistance for high traffic areas. So our next example is taken from some ongoing work with one of our Polish customers. They specialise in the application of overprint varnish onto flexible substrates for wrapping foil and banners for advertising. Our challenge with this project is to produce a water-based resin with excellent wetting and adhesion over these very specific substrates, as well as having a good chemical and abrasion resistance. As a starting point, Dispres 103 was sampled as our standard tough but flexible coating. And as we saw earlier, it also has a good chemical resistance. 
The initial feedback from the customer disclosed that they were having some adhesion failure with our standard product. So that then made it clear that we needed to progress with a modification. As well as the adhesion issues, the customer was also struggling with additive selection. So this provided us with another area to focus on. The resulting lab development work provided a resin that matches the adhesion, wetting and mechanical properties of their current solution, but with the extra advantage of improved chemical resistance. And the final example of success that I'd like to discuss this morning involves water-based waterproofing. So this time we were working with a small to medium sized construction chemicals company in the Middle East. They had a current solution that was acrylic based, but they were noticing issues with poor UV and water resistance. The standard product that we used in our development process was Distrius 103 due to its excellent hydrolysis resistance properties. The eventual modification that was made by the customer was a 20% replacement of the acrylic component with an incorrect polyurethane dispersion. So this gave them a resin that maintains the traditional benefits of acrylics whilst utilising a PUD to provide a much needed performance boost. The result was a resin that outperformed the acrylic only system in a number of key areas. So it had better hydrolysis resistance, improved UV resistance, reduced water uptake and reduced tackiness. So these next two slides highlight some of our lab results that we collected along the way of this development process. So you can see that the DISPUS 103 containing system has a better elongation retention after four weeks hydrolysis testing at 80 degrees, and it has a lower water uptake than the acrylic standard. And QUVB testing showed that the 103 containing system had a lower delta E value after 2000 hours of exposure. So this indicates less of a color change when exposed to UV, and so a better resistance during this accelerated weathering testing. I'll now pass back to Tushar to present a summary of the information presented during this webinar. Thanks. Right. Thank you, Francesca. Thank you, Kirk, for uh, providing the insight on uh, the disputers, polyurethane dispersions and its applications. Um, let me quickly summarize. So we have disputers range of polyurethane dispersions, which are uh, highly advanced PUDs, which bring out outstanding performance for a wide variety of applications um, like rigid plastics, flexible films, waterproofing, um, to name the few. It can also be used in inks, uh, flexible inks, you know, like um, textile inks, etc. So it can be used on its own. So how they work is that PUDs can be used on its own to achieve all the better performance on your final film and final coating. But if, if you are using an acrylic emulsion and if you want to improve the performance, then you can use dispurous polyurethane dispersions as a co-binder, which will improve your mechanical strength, your UV resistance, your durability, outdoor durability, particularly, you know, like water resistance, scratch resistance, etc. Uh, compared to your uh, acrylic emulsion only final res final product. Um, the last but not least, we also work together uh, using our custom chemistry approach uh, with the customer. So we start with a problem and then develop a dispurious dispersion from its essential block building blocks as explained by Kirk. And this we do it um, together working with customer R&D and finding out a bespoke solution which will help the customer to achieve the performance what he is looking for. So this is this is this is the whole summary and this is about polythene dispersion. Um, now we will move on to the question answer sessions. Um, so I would advise please use the Q and A uh, section uh, on your um, on on and, and start asking the questions. Um, we already have some questions which uh, I will start answering it. Um, the first question was is that will we receive the presentation after webinar by email? 
yes you will receive the presentation uh, with a link basically of this webinar um, the another question is do pud improve outdoor durability versus acrylic absolutely yes um, we will get improved performance by using polyurethane dispersion as i was explaining uh, as a co-binder with the acrylic emulsion uh, and it will improve your outdoor durability significantly uh, compared to your normal acrylic emulsion system um, i'm just right okay uh, does Incurus manufacture a UV curable polyurethane dispersions? I think I would like Kirk to answer this. Kirk, can you please uh, answer uh, this question? Yeah, no problem. Um, currently, no, we don't manufacture um, UV curable PUDs. Uh, historically, we, we have um, manufactured those and we, we do feel that we have a good um, historical knowledge of of this technology. So using our custom chemistry approach, we could certainly introduce this reactivity into the polymer backbone and offer you something specific to your requirement. OK, thank you. Kar. Okay. Thanks a lot. Um, one more question. Can dispurous polyurethanes be cross linkable? Um, Francesca, if you want to answer this question. Some applications. Yeah, no problem. Um, so yeah, with our range of polyurethane dispersions, they can be cross-linked. So with post addition of a polycarbodiamide, so we've used and tested um, Picassian and carbodolite grades in the past. You can also investigate cross-linking with polyazuridine additives, polyisocyanate additives. And if you want to go down an ionic cross-linking route, um, an aqueous solution of something like a nano-zinc um, will also be a suitable cross-linker to post add into the PUD. That's great. Thanks. Thank, thank you, Francesca. Um, one more question is, did you try your PUDs on wood substrate? Um, yes, uh, we have. We do use and we have customers who are using polyurethane dispersions on wood. As Kirk explained that uh, we have a uh, polyurethane dispersions which are crystalline, which are hard and which provides excellent scratch resistance. So yes, we do have polyurethane dispersions for wood substrates. If uh, there is a particular project you are working on uh, and if you need more advice, then please, um, you know, send us a separate email and we can discuss um, this, um, you know, application and then provide the solution for this application um right uh, the one more question is some of the amines used to neutralize puds can be a problem looking at indoor air quality regulations such as agbb uh, in germany an example of such amine is ta are dispersed puds free of ta or amines that contribute to the emission profile? I think, Kirk, you need to answer this question. OK, yes, our dispersed range um, is neutralized with TEA, um, but it's, this is something we're actively working on at the moment to overcome this. Uh, there are alternative amines out there that we are concentrating on, so it's likely that we will um, start to use these moving forward if the requirement is, is there. OK, thank you. Thank you, Kirk. Um, do we have starting formulation for floorings with dispersed? We do have some formulation guide formulation actually uh, for dispersed range, but uh, we have uh, all the relevant additive recommendations in our brochures actually. So we do have quite a range of selection of additives, uh, you know, which we which we work and which we advise which are suitable for um, suitable for uh, you know 
which are compatible with polyurethane dispersion. So yes, we do have some guide formulations, but we can work together if there is any, as I said, if there is any particular project, then please, you know, let us know and we can discuss. Um, right, is there a minimum quantity required to undergo a custom chemistry route? Um, that is a, a little bit tricky question actually there is uh, you know it as you as you are aware you know it has to justify the r d work as well so it all depends on you know the the overall volume and also um, also it all depends on you know how viable and feasible the project is but that can be discussed beforehand you know so we can we we basically suggest to bring you know the projects on the table and we will discuss internally um but you can provide as much as information to us on the custom chemistry approach in terms of you know what volumes it is and then it helps us actually to um justify and also to quickly decide on the project there is um, I can't answer in terms of a number like what volumes because it's very difficult uh, right now sitting here um, uh, to give you a particular number unfortunately. But again if you have that kind of information if you have that kind of project then please feel free to contact the relevant salesperson and and, and they will be able to help you out in that. Um, can PUDs be applied to polypropylene or polyethylene film for packaging? Uh, yes, we do have uh, uh, PUDs and hybrids basically which are used for PET films. Uh, polypropylene films PP are generally a very difficult substrate you know, to adhere to, but we do have products which adhere to BOPP. So if there is any particular project you know on poly P polypropylene or you know or polyethylene then please let us know and uh, we do have products in our range which can help um, getting improved performance in this kind of uh, substrates um, can it be used uh, there is one more question if pud can it be used on opv directly Yes, we do have actually a, a product which uh, which can be used as overprint varnish uh, directly, um, you know, as an as an overprint varnish. Basically, it has an excellent chemical resistance, excellent alcohol resistance, and um, excellent hand sanitizer resistance. So we do have product which can be used as overprint varnish. Uh, if you know, please let us know. Um, you know. Um, if there is a project you you are working on because then we will basically be able to quickly give you um, you know the, the the relevant information and the PUD samples basically. Um, the PUD dispersion can it be used for ponding water? Well, it's a very good question actually. Um, See, that's where we were discussing the applications on waterproofing. Um, and that's where the PUD helps because the Dispirus 103 has an excellent hydrolysis resistance. So because it has an excellent hydrolysis resistance, it does have a, a very good water resistance. So when you we test it at 80 degrees, leaving the film completely soaked under the water. Um, it's a very harsh test what we do in the lab and what we have found out that by adding or I would say 20% of PUD into your acrylic. So you replace your uh, acrylic emulsion with 20% of the dispirous polyurethane dispersion like I would say dispirous 103. Yeah, you will improve the ponding resistance. You will improve um, the water resistance basically of your final water, um, you know, the, the final coating. Um, 
yeah the the question here uh, i think i have mentioned but just uh, just to give an answer um, as a co binder what is the loading level of pud in acrylic to get good behavior well i would start with 20% uh, as i explained but it all depends on the the final requirement see because see it all depends on where the final application is so if it's basically for wall coating where it's very difficult you know for internal wall where it's not going to see a lot of you know um, like chemicals then you can start at 10% but if it's for exterior applications where you need very good uv resistance very good uh, water resistance then you will have to start at 20% and over but again it's a trial and error and it depends on your final performance requirements um have you ever tested suitability of pud in bituminous system for hydro insulation um we know we know that the pud is like from the experience what we have with the customers we know that we uh, you can um add uh, one of our puds because we know one of the pud works very well it has a very good compatibility with the bituminous emulsion so you can add the bituminous emulsion uh, you can add this pud in you know into the bituminous emulsion to improve some of the performances and the other question right there is one more agbb question kirk um did you did you not try your pud's on agbb rules so like they are asking that do we um, do we have um, you know kind of products you know which are uh, which are based on agbb specifically for agbb no um this is something quite new that we've been introduced to so it's something we're we're working on but generally speaking no not for our dispers range no but uh, can we kirk uh, you know on on the project basis can we you know let's say can we can we replace the ta you know or or with with another ame in which is not on agbb can uh, we do that you know do we uh, there is the be potential for the that customers? yeah the the custom chemistry approach will allow us to do that obviously so if we were to find something suitable for the manufacturer of the pud then obviously we could use that moving forward okay okay so that is possibility if okay. there is any particular uh, information on agbb um, you know requirement um, then please let uh, let let us know via email you know separately uh, okay um thank thank you kirk how about pud water absorption ratio see um frankie do you want to uh, do you want to join in here and answer this question uh, because this is something which you are testing day in day out in our applications lab you know with the water absorption and you know uh, and all the information what you have you know tests results yeah sure so distress 103 especially has a very low water uptake um so really just around 2 to 4% um i would say from the the test in the lab with the other um PUDs don't have those figures to hand right now but that's test data that that we have on all of the the standard products um so we'll be able to get them but like we said mentioned before distress 103 especially because of its low water uptake um low water uptake percentage score um that's what we recommend um as you mentioned in combination with acrylic emulsions uh and the very good hydrolysis resistance Mm, okay thank you thank you francesca um are the dispers products food contact compliant well this is this is the question which we get a lot actually um 
and as of now um, we don't have we only have one product which is non food grade so it's not direct food approval basically and that's dispurus 201 but this doesn't uh, this does not mean that we are not open um, you know to this kind of uh, applications as of now we have only one product but we can depending on the project we can look into and also we can um, apply for the food grade application so but again you know this all depends on you know uh, how 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 viable um, and how feasible the, the the project is and also um, if uh, you know we can uh, because then we might we might have already like let's say dispress 1 over on 103 if we start with as an example this product might already uh, you know be easier to to go and apply for the uh, food grade you know but again this is this all depends on the project and uh, as as soon as we have something like that we can work together with the customer to you know to provide that kind of application and Ah, do you also have any experience with metal coating? I think it's a very good question because um, Francesca, do you want to again uh, uh, please answer this question on the metal coating with dispurers? Yeah, sure. So we've carried out quite a um, a large range of adhesion testing across different substrates um, across the standard products. Um, so. Uh, quite a quite a lot of the standard products, 101A, 103, have good um, dry adhesion to aluminium, um, but we have results across a range of different substrates. So that's um, data is available if you have a specific substrate requ requirement. Um, as Kirk's already been through with the custom chemistry approach, we would start off with a, a standard grade that we know have that we've got good adhesion results within the lab. Um, so we have we have results for aluminium. And then any more specific substrates, um, you could um, easily just get in contact with us and we would then um, test and screen standard range and go on a recommendation from there and, and if necessary, make, make a modification from there. Okay, thank you, Francesca. Uh, but as, as Francesca explained, um, we, have, we have the experience and we have uh, some test results um, let's work together. Uh, let let us know basically. You know if there is a particular project and the substrate, and we will help you out. Um, there is one question, Kirk. This is for you. Um, Dispurase is a dispersion. Does that mean that your polymers are partially soluble? in glycol ethers um yes we we do recommend for coalescence especially um glycol ethers uh, butyl diglycol being one um uh, dpmb obviously is another one this all depends on how you want the, the final film to dry and the way in, in which it um, coalesces as well so yeah obviously there's going to be a certain level of solvent that you want to be putting in there you don't want to overload it and that would be um system specific and, and would need to be tested at, at the customer end. But yes, certainly the, the glycol ethers are compatible. OK, OK, thank you. Thank you, Kirk. Um, will Dispurase 103 give a good dirt pickup resistance as a roof coating? Well, it <laughs> It will because uh, with by adding Dispurase 103 um, to your system to acrylic emulsion, generally acrylic emulsions, you know, for the roof coatings are tacky and uh, they are um, really soft. Basically, um, by adding Dispurase 103 into uh, this type of roof coating, your tackiness will reduce. So that means that your tensile strength will be higher. And because of that, because there is less tensile strength and there is less softness and there is less tackiness, 
your dirt pickup will definitely improve compared to your pure acrylic emulsion yes 100% but again it all depends on the addition level it all depends on you know um it basically depends on the formulation final formulation as well um is the, um one more question is the hydrolysis resistance also high on high ph substrates like concrete um can they be applied directly onto concrete without the need of primers francesca have we tested the hydrolysis resistance on um... it's not something that um i've tested directly in the lab um but with anything with um cementitious substrates and high pH environments, if there was a standard product that, that wasn't suitable because of the dispersion, stabilize, dispersion stabilization mechanism, then that would be require another custom chemistry approach to produce a, a dispersion that that's, has good stability in, in a high pH environment. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, thank you, Francesca. One more question, can Dispirase 103 be used in bitumen films? See, you can add it into bitumen emulsions, but not, you can, uh, you cannot add, uh, you know, it, it won't, it will be very difficult to compatibilize the films as such, you know, with the liquid uh, Dispirase 103. So I would say if, it, if you are going to add in, into the emulsion, then we do have product which can be added into bitumen emulsion and which is stable by the way, but not in the films. Um, ah. Which grade has better UV resistance, 101 or 103? Uh, Francesca, do you want to answer this question? Yeah, of course. So Distro 101 and 103 both have, have good UV resistance. And we've noticed with lab tests that that can be even further improved by using a combination of um, HALs and UV stabilizer additives. Um, so using a a combination, um, so a 50-50 mix of the house and the UV um, stabilizer levels of from 0.2 to 0.5 percent. They're post added into the dispersion. Um, you achieve very good UV resistance after 2,000 hours QUVB. Excellent. Thank you, Francesca. Yes. Um, they have very good UV resistance because they are aliphatic. Um, as Kirk was explaining that um, segments basically, um, the isocyanate we are using is aliphatic isocyanate and so it does have very good UV resistance and that can be improved by addition of extra uh, HALs. Yeah, Tisha, in addition to that as well, both Dispres 101 and 103 are polycarbonates in nature. Um, and they, right. they offer better UV, inherent UV resistance than polyethers or polyesters. That's very true. Excellent, Kirk. Thanks. Um, last but not least, uh, can this production suitable for solvent bond PU? Well, um, generally because uh, water-based polyurethane dispersions, um, they are not compatible with uh, solvent bond PU. So no, they won't be, you know, we, we don't recommend that. Um, so no. Uh, we have another question. Are Tabor values of max 10 possible using Dispirez? Uh, CS17 wheels, um, one kilo, 1000 cycles. See, uh, we have tested the abrasion resistance, but that all depends on actually your um, final formulations. 
you know so we we if we do the testing on abrasion resistance then it will be resin only now if it's a clear then 90% in terms of you know 90 92% is resin if it's clear then we will have to do this test again we have done the testing but this particular cs17 i think we have not done it is that right francesca uh, do have we done cs17 wheels you know um, I don't think currently we have that information, but we do have, um, like you mentioned, we have the equipment. So if That's that was, right. yeah, we if can that test was a performance it. requirement, um, it would be um, yeah, very easy for us to test. Yeah, yeah. So we can definitely test that, um, you know, if there is there is any any particular requirement on that. Excellent. Thank you, Francesca. Uh, there is one more question is that after cured, so if the waterproofing membrane is cured, um, in, and if that membrane is put under the water, will it expand? And if ponding water is short time, such as one to 12 hours, will it absorb some water or expand? Right, Francesca, I think this is something we have done it in the lab and what we have seen is uh, if you want to explain, you know, hydrolysis resistance, we do it. Uh, and where do you see uh, the expansion will be, um, you know, compared to polyurethane dispersions and the yeah, addition sure. of polyurethane dispersions? So if we're just talking about the resin on its own, um, so unformulated, just a combination of the acrylic emulsion and the polyurethane dispersion, with the hydrolysis testing that we do where the films are fully submerged for two weeks and then four weeks, um, you see some swelling with the acrylic only resin, but the amount of swelling and expansion reduces with the amount of polyurethane dispersion that's incorporated. So on the addition of the PUD, you see less, less swelling. With the pigmented and formulated resins, you don't really see it um, to such an extent as the resin only system. So yeah, we've seen in the lab with the incorporation of the PUD, you see less swelling. Okay, thank you, Francesca. Um, regarding UV resistance, what do you mean by excellent resistance? I wonder uh, for how long PUDs could prevent from any UV damage? Well, this is a very good question because I'll, I'll explain uh, how we check it. We check uh, all our dispersed uh, products and polyurethane dispersions and PU acrylics and PUDs on its own. Um, in nearly 1000, 2000 hours and sometimes 4000 hours, QUVB, the B is like, you know, even more harsher compared to QVA. And uh, that is the reason when I say that it has excellent UV resistance means that it has passed 1000 to 2000 hours of QVB. Um, Q, yeah, QVB basically, you know, um, in, in the lab when we have tested the UV resistance. Um, also, because um, experience we have, uh, we have, we are selling our PUDs and PU acrylics um, hybrids with um, for uh, rigid plastic applications for so many years now and we can definitely say that the products have uh, very good UV resistance. And it also depends on your final formulation as well. So we know the combination of hulls and, uh, and the UV absorber which we have tested and we know that it works very well. If there is any particular information you need on an, on any product, um, you know, let's say if you need a information on, you know, if, if we have tested 101 or 103, then let us know and uh, we will send that information. We do have the information on, on UV resistance, um, like, you know, before, after, uh, with addition of, uh, you know, along with, with addition of all the, you know, hulls and UV absorbers. Um, 
I think there are no more questions. Let's wait for one or two minutes, and then we can uh, close the question answer sessions. Okay, uh, so no more questions. Oh no, there is one, one just popped up, sorry. Uh, we mainly discuss about Dispurus 101 and 103. What are the main utilizations of other grades like 102 and 201? Are they only co-binder to modify Dispurus 101 and 103? Um, actually, no, the main reason we are discussing 101, 103, because they are for um, rigid substrates, you know, uh, as, as we explained, and those are the ones where they are used in uh, for, uh, you know, outdoor performances. As Kirk explained, 102 and 201, they are the soft, flexible ones, which are used for um, mainly, you know, for the uh, poly PET application for the flexible films application you know uh, we do have actually not only 102 and 201 but we do have other CS grades as well which are very um, which are actually used for uh, different applications like hot stamp foil cold stamp foil etc you know um, but here when we discuss on you know on the UV resistance again 102 and 201 they both are also based on um, you know uh, aliphatic uh, isocyanate uh, where 201 is like polyether type of the polyol and 102 is kind of polyester polycarbonate so even they have very good uv resistance as well yeah, and other general properties are good as well Any more questions? Okay, uh, looks like no more questions. I would like to thank you everyone for attending. Um, the recording will also be available to download and it will be sent out the recording link in an email together with the survey. Please fill the survey um, as much as possible. This will help us. Um, if if uh, you have any further questions or queries, uh, please, uh, we will, you know, if we are not able to answer now, we will answer the questions um, separately, whoever has questions now. And if you have any queries, then um, our contact details will be in the email which you get. So please email us directly and then we will help you uh, with, with your inquiries and queries. Um, I would like to thank you again. Thanks a lot. And um, yeah, thank you.